This week I want to focus on just one main ingredient and that main ingredient is going to be ground beef. These recipes are tried and true in our house and I wanted to share them with you. Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the Making. So let's say you've got ground beef in your fridge or in your freezer and you are looking for some meals to make with that. I'm going to share with you five different recipes to give a try this week. Five new recipes. Yes, ground beef, super simple. Let's go ahead and jump into the first recipe. If you've been around for a while, you know that we love meatloaf. Cole especially loves meatloaf. That's like his favorite meal. And this one is a taco meatloaf. We're gonna preheat the oven to 350. In my mixer, I already have two pounds of ground beef. I'm gonna add one and a half cups of crushed Doritos. Two eggs. got one can of Rotel. This is the Aldi brand Rotel. That's a lot of liquid in there. It doesn't say to drain it. I'm gonna drain a little bit. Okay, adding that in. I've got my onion that I diced. Either a pack of taco seasoning or three tablespoons of homemade. Said to use four ounces of corn. I'm using almost a cup of frozen corn. And then you need about one and a half cups of cheese. I've got half. Thank you. The oven's ready. Then you need one and a half cups of cheese. I've got half pepper jack, half cheddar. And I think this is a little too much cheese maybe, so somebody will be happy to hear that. I'm sure she'll take care of that for me. She's sitting right over here next to me. And let's start mixing. I'm so excited that I don't have to use my hands. Well, that was ridiculously easy. Thankful for that. Okay, let's put this in a loaf pan. I've got a meatloaf pan here. I got mine from Amazon. I will try and remember to link it below. It's nice because you can just lift it up and all of the fat and juices kind of go below it. But I always used to just use a loaf, just a regular loaf pan before I had this. Okay, so the, do you see who's sitting over here next to me? Cause she knows I have the cheese. The recipe says to make two small loaves with this, but we're just gonna do one large loaf. I normally do two pounds of meat here in this pan. So it should be perfectly fine. I might just have to bake it for a little bit longer. That's it, this is going in the oven at 350 for about an hour. It'll probably take closer to an hour and a half since I have a large loaf. So I set the timer for an hour. We'll check it at that point, but I'm guessing it'll be more like 90 minutes. So it's been an hour and this is where we're at. We want it to get to 160. So I'm gonna put it in for another, we'll check it after another 20 to 30 minutes. Our meatloaf is done. I'm just gonna add a little extra cheese on top. And we'll pop it back in the oven just to let that melt down. So little confession, when I was serving this up, I thought, oh my gosh, there's still raw pieces of meat in there. Nope, that's the Rotel. <laughs> it is definitely up to temperature, we're good to go. So, you ready to do this? Without further ado. That's right. I have a feeling this is gonna be delicious. Oh yeah, it smells like that good taco meat. Cole is about to pass out, he's so happy. This is amazing. Mmm. Oh, wow. Yeah? Yes. Yay, I'm so excited. Oh, man. First of all, it's spicy, and it's also... Not dry. Not dry. Excellent. So that was my mm. fear. I was I was scared that I put too many... Mm -mm. I don't know. I was just scared mm. that it was going to come out mm. a little dry. Mm. It's perfect. Man, lots of flavor. Okay. And then meat. I mean, packed full of good... Uh, taco flavors yeah. in there. Oh, wow. That is really good. I am so excited. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm about to dig in. Let me dig in. I'll be right back. Mm. I have to tell you, my brain had a hard time comprehending this. It's delicious, number one. Mm -hmm. But my brain was like, wait, this is tacos. But no, it's meatloaf. Which one is it? It can't be both. <laughs> yeah. But, so you were saying... Maybe a little enchilada sauce? So meatloaf normally has like ketchup on top or some yeah. type of sauce on top. 
So if you put some red enchilada sauce on top. Yeah. Okay, I'm digging it. Then That's... we're 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 swinging for the swinging for the fences when we do that. <laughs> I don't know that term or that that little saying, but is that baseball? Swinging for the fence, I guess. Is it? I don't know. That I don't watch baseball. Yeah. Okay. Colt, does it rank up there with one of your favorite it, meatloafs it, ever? It ranks. Okay. He loves meatloaf and he's picky about it, so that's impressive. Mm. So if you're wondering about this corn, make sure you stay tuned. And a very yeah. Very. <laughs> I'm with you on that. So if you're wondering about this corn, just stay tuned. I have another video coming up very soon that's gonna show you how to make this. Daddy still enjoyed look at that little leg. <laughs> Get it, girl. Oh yeah. Get it. I wanted to jump in here really quickly and thank ButcherBox for sponsoring this portion of today's video. We have been receiving ButcherBox for, I believe, about three years. And I would say that the majority of our meals are made with ButcherBox meat. So what is ButcherBox? ButcherBox is a meat subscription service where you decide what cuts of meat you want delivered straight to your door. They are frozen at their peak freshness and sent right to you. So you can just open the box, take them out, put them right in your freezer, and then just thaw them as you need them. You are getting the highest quality meat at an affordable price, and you never have to pay for shipping. So the different meats that they offer, you've got 100% grass-fed, beef, free range organic chicken, humanely raised pork, and wild caught seafood. At ButcherBox, they just believe in better. They believe in caring for animal welfare and supporting farmers and treating our planet with respect and just better meals enjoyed together. So what is the true value of ButcherBox? First of all, price. That is always everyone's main concern and the least expensive box will make up to 24 meals for you and your family. You've got two different box options. You've got the curated box where they choose the cuts of meat. And then you've got the custom box where you can go in and handpick each cut of meat that is delivered. The curated box, the classic size box is $146. And you get eight to 11 pounds of meat. And like I mentioned, 24 meals. And then the one that we choose is the custom box. You get nine to 14 pounds of meat. It's $169 and you can get about 30 meals from it. Okay, so our value in price, also our value in time. I don't know about y'all, but there have been many times, especially more recently, where I go to the grocery store and I was looking for some particular cut of meat and I cannot find it or I find it and it does not look appealing. So ButcherBox is saving you time. You order everything that you need. It comes directly to your door. You don't even have to leave your house. And that ties in with value number three, which is quality. You are getting the highest quality meats delivered right to your door. Another value category is member benefits. Once you are a part of the ButcherBox community, you can get access to special member deals and add-ons for each box if you want. Sometimes they'll have limited specialty items, prepared items, holiday items. So just check those out each time that you go to kind of customize your box. And then the last category is just peace of mind. Just knowing that you're going to get all of the meat that your family needs and that you're getting it from a company that is dedicated to doing the right thing. So if you are interested in taking a look at ButcherBox and how that can help your family, be sure to click the link below for this month's exclusive limited time offer. Plus, you're always gonna get free shipping. Thank you again to ButcherBox for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back to cooking. Tonight we're trying a new recipe we're really excited about. It's called Beer, Bacon, and Cheese Sloppy Joes. I've got this large skillet heated to medium high heat. I am going to brown up or cook up all of this bacon. It's about a pound of bacon. Now that I've drained the bacon, I've kept about two tablespoons of the bacon fat in there, and I've got this onion that's been diced, and we're just gonna get it soft. Now that our onions are soft, I'm gonna add in a pound and a half of lean ground beef. We're gonna cook this up, but you don't wanna crumble it too fine. You want it to have a little bit of substance to it so that it won't be too messy on your bun. Now 
now that our ground beef is cooked up, we're gonna add in a half a cup of ketchup, fourth a cup of tomato paste, one tablespoon of Dijon mustard, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, a half a cup of beef broth, and we've got one cup of beer. This is Guinness. So I'm just stirring this to combine it and I'm gonna get it to come up to a slow simmer. I'm gonna let it kind of evaporate and reduce down until it's the consistency that we want. Obviously we want the alcohol to cook out. So that's gonna take between five and 10 minutes. I'm just gonna keep an eye on it. So it's taking a little bit longer than we had hoped. And I think there was just a little bit too much beer that the recipe called for. If I were to make this again, I would probably just do like a half a cup, maybe up to three fourths of a cup of beer, but it's getting there. This is the consistency we want. So now we're gonna add in our bacon and our cheese. We're just going to stir this in and let the cheese just start to melt. And then we're gonna put it on the buns. Time to get messy. <laughs> Man. It looks so good. Just gotta get in here. Yep. It ain't time to be dainty. Mmm. <laughs> Cole is in love over there. All that cheese that's just puddled up in there, but then the mass of bacon in this thing. Mm -hmm. That is delicious. Gracie knows there's cheese. Mm -hmm. Gracie, you want some cheese? Grace. <laughs> well, I've never had Sloppy Joe's quite like this. And I mean, Sloppy Joe's are supposed to be sloppy, but the cheese certainly holds us together really well. Yeah. And I like how it's not as uh, broken up into little pieces. So that was that was a really nice touch. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. Regular Sloppy Joes, the Pioneer Woman way, or these Sloppy Joes? Wow. Cole says these. Are they just completely different? Well, regular Sloppy Joes, like just some hamburger meat with the Sloppy Joe mix. Well, that's out the door. <laughs> yeah, I might as well just... Well, yeah, that's how I made it for you. Pioneer Woman, years. yeah, Pioneer Woman is like a whole separate... Right. I mean, it, it's still... I like that just because there's so much to it. Right. Just the Pioneer Woman, there's a lot of other things. I mean, you could definitely add peppers and stuff in here too, and it would be just fine. But this, I mean, I, I, just, I just think there's just more flavor here. There's just more goodness coming out of this thing. All right. Why am I shorter than you? That is not cool. Oh, little Lou. She said, where's the cheese, please? This is a clown show today. Clown show? A tater show, apparently. Hey, I'm a commentator. <laughs> it's time to commentate. Gina, is it Kaiser? I'm going to say it's Kaiser. Gina Kaiser. Gina Kaiser won. He said, Jenna. Mandy. Jenna. Jenna. Oh, Jenna. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're probably butchering your name, Jenna. Starting over. <laughs> Jenna Kaiser says, Mandy, this is my first comment on your page. I have a pronunciation tip from a Louisiana girl. Tony Shatcheries is pronounced Sacheries. Is it Shat? Sacheries. 
Okay. So Sherry. <laughs> so if you watched last week's video, um, I was using a Cajun or Creole seasoning, and it's the Tony Shacheries. Sa 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 Oh my word. You remember that one, the sweet and spicy? Yeah. Yeah, that was so delicious. Time to have that but again. thank you for helping us, trying to help us. Yes, thank you. Maybe I just need to Google it, because you know you can do pronunciation on that's Google. Right. So that's we, what we need we to do. We should do that. Do okay. that right now. You're looking at how to pronounce the name of this American businessman and chef, Sachery. Sachery. So the first syllable in yes, it's a Sash You were helpful. Thank Very you. Very good. Sachery. That's hard because you see the H yeah. in the beginning. But okay, we we, we, we have found weird a, a, ways of a YouTube video. Stuff. Tony Saturdays. <laughs> I'm just gonna say Creole seasoning. <laughs> <laughs> this first casserole is like Tex-Mex inspired. It's called firecracker casserole. Now that I'm finishing up this jalapeno, let's move over to the stove and brown our ground beef. I've got this medium to large skillet here. I'm gonna heat it to about medium high heat. And I did wanna mention I already have my oven preheated to 350 degrees. I'm just gonna add in my lean ground beef. This is 93.7, so I won't have to drain it. The recipe doesn't say to add this until you're assembling the casserole but I like the flavor of my onion cooked in with my ground beef, so that's what we're gonna do. Okay, while our ground beef is cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and shred up about a cup of cheese. Okay, let's start assembling our casserole. I am gonna spray this dish. So I'm gonna do a layer of meat on the bottom. So the recipe calls for ranch style beans. I could not find that at my grocery store, so I'm just gonna use chili beans. You don't want to drain this, so I'm leaving all of the juice in there. We're gonna pour about half of it on now. Now I'm gonna add in about half a can of Rotel. Some cream of mushroom soup. I've got corn tortillas that I'm just going to rip up into smaller pieces and layer on here. I'm gonna add our cheese, just about half of it right now. And I just realized I never added my jalapeno to my beef, so let's do that now. The bottom layer won't have jalapeno, but this second layer will. Okay, this is going in a 350 degree oven for about 45 minutes. Reminds me of chili. It's got the, the beef, the chili flavors in there. It kind of is like chili, isn't it? It's very much like chili, but that's really good. Is it? Oh yeah, with that sour cream. Yeah. Spicy and then the sour cream and those beans. Oh, I love the pinto bean flavor. Yeah, the chili too. beans, yeah. Mm -hmm. So in case you didn't notice or catch it when I was assembling the casserole, I totally forgot to put another layer of the cream of mushroom soup. We were kind of in a rush mm -hmm. and I wasn't paying attention, but I'm guessing it's okay without it. Oh yeah, it's got plenty of flavor in that. It's funny when I use the uh, chips here, it reminds me of, of like a, a nacho 
Yeah. Like a smothered nachos or whatever. Suzanne Fitzpatrick says, love the way you pronounce the word boil. Go ahead. <laughs> As bowl. <laughs> I say it differently, believe it or not. I say the word for this differently than water comes up to a bubble. Okay, y'all ready for this? When water comes up to a bubble, it is bowl. Bowl, okay? When I see one of these, this is a bowl. You hear the difference? Bowl, bowl. Very. It's very different. Very minute No, it's difference. very different in my mind. When I read that, I just busted out laughing. I was like, oh, no, I don't say it like bowl. This is a bowl. Bowl. And water that bubbles. Bowl. Boils. 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 It boils. There is a town not far from where we lived. Spelled B-O-I-L-I-N-G. Boiling. Boiling springs. Boiling. Do you want to know how people around here say it? Bowling springs. Bowling springs. <laughs> yeah, but the, sp Bullen. the springs is often... Uh, springs. Yeah, springs. Bowling. Bowling springs. It's either bowling or bowling. I say bowling. Bull yeah. and Springs. And see, my dialect from my side of the family or my dad's side uh -huh. is actually in uh, kind of the the Appalachian, Appalachian mountain dialect. talk yes. sort of dialect. Yes. So I've got a mixture of that. And then I was in the Air Force for a time yeah. and I sort of kind of blended, you know. Yeah. I'm sorry. You're like always almost off camera. Yeah. Sorry about that. It's all good. Um, <laughs> it's all good. But that's how... Those are two, to me, they sound completely different when I say them. The southern there's dialect can be all over the place. Bull, and then there's bowl. That's right. Bull, bowl. I mean, it's completely different. I don't know how in the world it doesn't sound different to y'all. Context is everything with Mandy, <laughs> okay? I am getting dinner ready for tonight. It is only lunchtime now, but I'm putting it in the crock pot. We're having crock pot cheeseburger soup. It's really easy. Um, the longest part of it is just chopping up all the stuff that goes in it. So in the crock pot, um, these are our four potatoes, just uh, the russet potatoes, small ones, diced up. Um, one stalk of celery diced, one cup of shredded carrots, and one onion in here, chopped up. So all of that is gonna go in, along with three cups of chicken broth, um, a teaspoon of basil and a teaspoon of parsley. I'll just eyeball that. And then you just put that um, on low for six to eight hours or on high for about four hours. And then I'll show you what we do after that. All right, so it is, it's been five hours. Like there's five minutes left on the timer. Ideally around 45 minutes or so left on the timer, you would come and start this. I just let time get away from me. Um, but this is just a pound of ground beef, and once I brown that up, I'll drain it and add it directly to the crock pot. And then in this hot skillet, I'm going to put three tablespoons of butter and a fourth a cup of flour and whisk that around until it becomes golden brown and bubbly. Then I'll add in two cups of milk and stir that through and heat that through and then add it into here, as well as two cups of shredded cheese. You could use Velveeta if you wanted to use Velveeta or you can use shredded cheese, the recipe says. Also, and you'll just add in like a half a teaspoon or so of each of these salt and pepper and then let that sit for 30 more minutes. So that's why you kind of start the process 45 minutes ahead of time. It gives you a few minutes to get this stuff done, add it in there, and then that's gonna sit in there for 30 minutes and then it'll be time to eat. All right, y'all, so it's been 30 minutes and it is done look at that it's so good it really is just like a cheeseburger it's so great um, i didn't make anything else to go with this tonight it is just a soup night so let's eat let's see that's michelle stockton said <laughs> that marinade sounds delicious you can cook your pork tenderloin in the air fryer on 360 for about 20 to 25 minutes. It is juicy and a nice crust on the outside. Michelle, is it Michelle? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'm gonna try that. I have another pork tenderloin. 
I'm going to do my marinade, and I'm going to try it in the air fryer. I don't know why I'm so skeptical of stuff in the air fryer. I don't either. So many of the things that you've made have been absolutely like fantastic. Like your favorite wings are yeah, from the absolutely air fryer. favorite wings. Go check it out on YouTube. I guess you could probably just type in yeah. air fryer wings or yeah, something. Yeah, we can, link, we can link it below. Yeah. Yeah, I'm telling you what. One of the best recipes. Mm -hmm. We used to just put, you know, we'd uh, we'd season them up, and we'd throw them in there in the oven and bake them. Right. Um, and they were fine. And they were fine that way too. But air, fryer, but air fryer ones? Oh man, the color so that gets on there and everything. We need to try pork tenderloin in the air fryer. That. So Definitely. thank you, Michelle. Yeah, I have that. um I have screen I took a screenshot. I was gonna say screenshotted. <laughs> <laughs> I took a screenshot of it and when I thaw out the other pork tenderloin, we're gonna try it in the air fryer. So thank yeah. you. Another restaurant favorite of ours, it comes from Texas Roadhouse, is called Roadkill Steaks. We're gonna have that and a Greek corn salad. We're gonna start making the Greek corn salad and the first thing we need to do is make the vinaigrette that goes on it. Right now I'm just chopping up some fresh oregano. We need about two tablespoons for this. I'm adding three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, two tablespoons of red wine vinegar, one teaspoon of honey, My two tablespoons of oregano, a few grinds of black pepper, and about three-fourths of a teaspoon of salt. I'm just going to put the lid on this and put it in the fridge until we're ready to assemble the corn salad. Now we're just going to cut up all of our veggies that's going to go in the salad. chopping up these olives, it called for a third a cup of green olives that have been pitted. I could not find any that didn't have pimentos in them, so we're just gonna go with it. It calls for one small red onion. I just have this large one, so we're just gonna use half of it. The last thing we're gonna add for now is about a half a cup of feta. That's all we're going to do for now. We will steam the corn and add that to it later and then put the vinaigrette all over it and just combine it all, but we'll do that closer to time to eat. Next we're going to prepare our roadkill. We are going to prepare the toppings now. The recipe calls for sliced Monterey Jack cheese. I could not find that at the grocery store, so I bought a block of pepper jack cheese. And I was gonna slice it, but we decided I'm just gonna grate it and we will just sprinkle that on top. Now we're gonna start on our roadkill steaks. I've got a pound of organic grass-fed beef, it's 85.15. To that, I'm gonna add one egg, three tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, three tablespoons of A1 sauce, a teaspoon of seasoning salt, and a half a teaspoon of black pepper. to make these about a third a pound each. Now it's time to start cooking our roadkill steaks. We're going to put them in a skillet that's on medium high and we're going to sear them on both sides and then we're going to transfer them to the oven at 400 degrees. The recipe calls for 12 minutes but I don't think that we're gonna need that full 12 minutes because ours are pretty thin and we want it about medium well. It's completely up to you how long you leave it in there. These sear up really fast, so make sure you keep your eye on it. You're gonna flip them pretty soon after you put them on. These are done. I'm gonna transfer them to a broiler pan that I've lined with aluminum foil.
To the same skillet, we just added a little EVOO and we're gonna go ahead and saute our mushrooms and our onions. before we add it to the salad. I've taken all the mushrooms out of this one. This is for coal. We're gonna top it with the pepper jack cheese. These are gonna go back in the oven just for a couple of minutes until the cheese is melted. This looks really good. That's exactly what I remember the roadkill looking like at Texas Roadhouse. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, I love that flavor. Definitely get the, the sauces that you put in, the A1 and the, the Worcester sauce. And the flavor of the steak is just amazing. I love the texture of it. It's very, I won't use the M word. <laughs> Thank you. It's very juicy. How about that? There you is that go. better? Yeah. Very juicy. I love that cheese. The cheese with the onion. Very rich and savory flavor. All right, let's try this salad here. That looks amazing. Wow. Wow, that is really good with that, with this savory meat, with this coming in behind that, breaking it up with that vinaigrette. So it, is it as good as Texas Roadhouse? Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Yay. There's no question about it. Awesome. Okay, so I mentioned something off camera and Steven said I needed to tell y'all, but this salad is so good. I can see me making it for like a church function or a potluck or something like that. It is so good. The flavors are perfect together, and I think it would be great chilled, too. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you did, and don't forget to go check out ButcherBox. Use the link in the description box below, and you can claim this month's exclusive offer and just get to see what ButcherBox can offer for your family. Thanks, y'all, and I'll see you next time. Bye.